Hey what's up welcome back to the layout well in this video I'm gonna be showing you how I do a little bit of plaster work on a couple of the mountains I got going on here first I'll be starting with the cut slope style mountain here in that corner and after that I'll be working on this mountain here which is a much scaled down version of the mountain you can find at Cajon Pass but given the space that's what I got so I like to get this step out of the way so I can continue with my ballast work and keep moving forward so to help guide me in my task I went ahead and printed out a couple reference photos these are from Summit at Cajon Pass the one on the right you can see really shows you the erosion that's taken place on one of the slopes and the one on the left shows you a sediment line that's running horizontally through the slope now I'm not trying to model summit here on the layout I'm just taking inspiration from some of the cut slopes you can find around there and with that being said I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'm gonna get to work. First I begin masking off my track. Following the instructions on the side of the package, I use some Woodland Scenics carving plaster and begin to mix that up. Next I begin applying the plaster to the mountain, keeping the thickness around a quarter of an inch. And any leftover plaster, I begin applying it to the next mountain. Using a small sculpting tool, I begin shaping the mountain and dipping my fingers in water. I begin smoothing out the mountain. Using my reference photo and a different style sculpting tool, I begin carving away, trying to simulate the erosion. Smooth everything out. I use a wet finger and give it a quick brushing. And continue working away. I wasn't really happy with the horizontal lines, so I smoothed them out a little bit. a quick vacuuming and I continue on. Starting at the next mountain I begin applying more plaster and since I had remaining leftover plaster I just went ahead and decided to go ahead and do this mountain also. Again, using the wet finger method to smooth everything out. Using gloves helps with this. Again, I begin carving away. Using a reference photo I printed out to help guide me along and give me an idea. Begin carving up the unique holes in the rock formation and continue carving, just having fun with it. To 
Now with the 15 minute working time, blaster, carving two mountains at the same time and trying to film is a little bit tricky, but I was able to get it done. With a little bit of housekeeping, I move on to the back side of the rock formation. Again, spreading out more plaster and shaping away. After shaping with my fingers, I begin carving the back side of the mountain. I'm being pretty random here, again just having fun with it. And that's it for the carving of the plaster. Now I can move on to painting. Using some apple barrel sandstone, I begin applying the paint to the mountain going to be my base coat. So I do my best to fill in all the cracks. And here I have the same color with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in just to give it a little bit of a darker hue and try and concentrate that into the cracks. Here using sandstone mixed with a little bit of white. I give it a light dry brushing just across the face of the whole mountain. Moving on to the next two mountains. Using sandstone again, I begin applying paint to the next mountain. Making sure to fill in all the little holes and cracks. Again on the third mountain, I begin applying sandstone, being sure to fill in all the cracks. I will be doing two coats just to make sure I get nice even coverage. Mormon rock formations can appear from anywhere from white to a light golden beige. So to help give it that golden color, I use some yellow orchard diluted with some water. Go ahead and apply that all over. Go ahead and apply the orchard to the formation in the corner, and I am done with painting. Okay, so here's the progress I've made so far on the three mountains here. I got the layout turned around for some better access and better lighting. But I'm really pleased with the way it's coming out. It's not 100% done yet, but close enough to end the video. So next uh, I'm going to be working on the backdrop. So as you can see I have a piece of hardboard here and I'll be cutting that to size mounting that up I got some cool brackets I found that I'll be using I'll be screwing some wood into the back of the hardwood or hardboard and uh, so they have a nice shoe to sit in so to speak and I'll give you guys a little bit of a little bit of a preview of what I'll be doing right now so here's a little bit of a sneak preview of a upcoming project slash video I'll be having out in the near future. I have the hardwood mounted up and a big concern is the, the gap that you see there. So I'll probably be putting some wax paper up against and using that celluclay to fill in the gap and just have a nice clean butt up between the scenery and the, the wood. So that'll be an experiment in itself. And as you can see, I have a picture that I've taken. I actually have a 
couple sets of panoramic pictures I took out there. Yes, I did make a trip. I haven't put a video out yet, but that's a story for another day. And you can see the cell tower there in the corner. That doubles as a cool scenery thing and a little bit of a block between the transitions of the photos, but again, that's going to be another story. So yeah, there's a little bit of a sneak peek of uh, what it's going to be looking like. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, and if you haven't subscribed, you should do that now so you don't miss anything. And make sure and hit that bell. Okay, so that's going to wrap this one up. I do appreciate you uh, tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.